Hey, uh, so I'm Simon. Um, I've linked to a little bit more information about the work I do below. Uh, but basically, I'm a principal scientist at the Marine Megafauna Foundation, uh, where I lead the Global Whale Shark Program. And I'm also a voluntary uh, science advisor to the Global Whale Shark Database at whaleshark.org. And I'm a regional co chair for the IUCN Shark Specialist Group for Sub Equatorial Africa. Um, so I've been studying sharks, mostly whale sharks, full time now um, since um, 2005, really. And I did my PhD from 2002. Uh, so I've been in this field for a while. And because I um, post photos and things on social media and some information about the work we're doing, uh, I've been getting more and more questions about how I got into this and and also some asking for people asking for advice about how they can do something similar and it's gotten to the point where there's too many emails really for me to reply to everyone individually and I thought well it's going to be much more scalable for me to answer the common questions uh, in a format like YouTube or blogs or something so everyone can hopefully benefit from from that um, not that I have all the answers by by any means but but at least I can tell you what my experience has been and the main thing I'd like to achieve with that is just like I mean our oceans our animals and that they need a lot of help um, conservation is a really pressing concern these days uh, for the for the world for ourselves um, so I'd like to make sure that people can get the same sort of opportunities that I had and and hopefully make a difference um, so that's a pretty cool thing for, for me to achieve if I can help even one person uh, accomplish that for themselves. So I'm going to do a series of uh, short little videos, uh, keep them fairly bite-sized and sort of answer one of the frequently asked questions each each time I do one. Um, so I'm just going to start with uh, the main one, I guess, the overarching one is like, how do I make money as a shark scientist? And we've got a fairly unique situation in that I'm not employed by a university. Um, myself and my colleague Andrea Marshall uh, started a research foundation based in the US uh, back in 2012. And she's in charge of the Global Manta Ray program. And I'm, in, as I said, in charge of the, the Whale Shark program. Um, these days in, in 2018, how, how most of my money comes in is we've got a few uh, private donors, uh, which are either individuals or, or trusts that we've got a long-standing relationship with and they're funding kind of mostly our general programs. So I've sort of submitted to them what I would like to accomplish through the year or over a period of years, preferably. And, and I've decided to support that general program. So that helps us cover salaries and things like that uh, for both myself and my staff. Um, the we also get uh, grants sometimes and I really encourage my students to apply for grants that will help them uh, to do their own specific projects because it's a it's a big part of being a scientist and things is um, and we all need money to uh, to accomplish our goals um, but one thing I've found with grants increasingly is that like the the highly competitive these days uh, they take quite a lot of time to apply for and they don't often cover things like salaries and stuff. Um, so if you know you're going to get a grant for a few thousand dollars, it's totally worth applying for. Um, if you're kind of one of 200 applicants and there's only five grants or something that are giving out, then the odds may or may not be in your favor because it's, it's, it can be a bit of a shotgun approach as to who gets them. So um, we've really focused on cultivating uh, individual donors and, and trusts and foundations that we've got a good long-standing relationship with. Um, it's much easier to keep a donor than to get a new one. Um, so if you give them some really good updates and things about what you're doing, then hopefully they'll kind of buy into the work you're doing and um, you can develop a relationship with them and that allows you to accomplish your goals a lot faster. Um, one of the other things I do is that uh, I'm really lucky with whale sharks and that a lot of people are interested in swimming with them or diving with them or having a look at them. Uh, so I've linked up with some dive travel companies and they help to uh, cover our costs in the field uh, when we're working with them and that can cover things like airfares and stuff which is hugely useful uh, because it, then it means we don't need to look for grants and stuff to cover that. 
Um, so there's, there's kind of two things we're always focusing on. It's like one thing, how can we get money in? And, and also how can we avoid spending that money on, on things that could be covered, covered in other ways. Uh, so certainly working with dive travel uh, groups where we're getting some donations per person or from the company and helping to cover our costs of field work are uh, hugely useful as well. And I think that's a pretty fun experience for the people, hopefully. So that's good to uh, enjoy it. Um, yeah, I'll, um, okay, I'll, one more thing, I guess. Um, it's really important to be aware of different kinds of funding uh, that you can apply for. So there's the two sort of broad categories are restricted funding, uh, which is funding that can only be used for a specified purpose. So often in grants, you'll say, okay, I need $50,000 for 10 satellite tags or something. And legally, you're only allowed to use that money for satellite tags, um, which is awesome, uh, but you've still got to cover your flights and salaries and things like that as well. Um, so the other type of funding you can go for is unrestricted funding. Um, so that's funding that you can use towards any of the sort of stated goals um, of your program if you're like a registered charity or non-profit or something. So that can also be, also be used to cover things like salaries and stuff. Um, so part of the reason that we've focused on, on private donors and trusts and foundations and things is that once you've developed a relationship with them, uh, they're often happier to uh, to provide unrestricted funding that can support your whole program. And that also includes things like stuff you might want to do, like exploratory programs that um, are hard to get funding for from conventional grants because you haven't shown you can do them yet. Uh, so that's really useful too. So the more unrestricted funding you can get and the less you can avoid spending it, uh, the better you, you are if you're trying to create a career in this business. Uh, restricted funds are great. Um, and, and of course, you, you always need equipment and things like that, um, but it's pretty hard to cover salaries and travel and stuff with that money sometimes, um, unless you're pretty lucky. So, so yeah, I'll leave it at that for now and hope you enjoy this. And if you've got any comments uh, or questions uh, leading on from this, just put them in the comments and I'll, I'll do some follow-up stuff uh, for you soon. And if you'd like to subscribe to this, um, I'll be doing quite a few of these little tidbits so definitely share them with other people that might be interested and yeah let me know how i can help you if you've got a question um i'll do my best to answer it cool. thanks bye